Namaste friends. Today I am going to talk to you about type 1 diabetes. What is type 1 diabetes? As we know, first of all, diabetes itself means an increase in blood sugars. When does that happen? When our pancreas fails to produce enough insulin, then the sugars start to increase. That is called diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, it so happens that our entire pancreas becomes dormant, particularly the beta cells which produce insulin. As a result, the body insulin becomes absolute zero. Therefore, the sugars in the blood increase anywhere between 300 to 800 even. What are the risk factors for developing type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes does not have so much of genetic predisposition. That means, if parents have type 1 diabetes, the children may not get type 1 diabetes. Whereas, the more common form of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which is like, which amounts to 98 out of all 100 cases of diabetes in the entire community, that comes, that runs through generations, that runs in family. Whereas, type 1 diabetes just happens at random. Why does it come at all? There are some theories, some viral infections uh, during early infancy, they can result in type 1 diabetes at a later stage. And type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition. That means our body antibodies start working against our own pancreatic beta cells which produce insulin. Therefore, over a period of, period of time, the insulin production will come down and becomes zero. What is the age group during which type 1 diabetes is commonly diagnosed? This happens in children mostly. Typically, type 1 diabetes occurs in the age group of less than 30 or 25 years. Commonly, that is happening these days around the age of 8, 9, 10 and in some cases 15 or 20, 22, 24 years of age. We are even seeing type 1 diabetes in newborn babies. How is type 1 diabetes recognized or diagnosed? The affected child will be losing weight uh, in amounts of around 2 to 3 kgs within 3 weeks or so. Over a period of a month or two, uh, he or she may lose around 6 to 9 kilograms of body weight. That is one clue to type 1 diabetes. And more often than this, the child will develop fever or sudden stomach pain or a lot of vomiting or even diarrhea. When they are admitted in the hospital for vomiting or diarrhea, they will be found out to have type 1 diabetes. The sugars would be in the range of 500, 600, 700. Now let us discuss about what to do when someone is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. The treatment for type 1 diabetes as of now is insulin. Insulin is the first and the best choice of therapy as of now. There are different ways of giving that insulin though. One may use the olden day syringe, one another may use a pen, somebody may use a pump. But insulin is the underlying principle for all these forms of management. And how many times does one need to take this insulin? To understand that, we have to understand how sugars increase in the body. When the child consumes food, there will be a peak within one and a half to two hours. The sugars will shoot up to 300, 500, 600 values at that time. And that happens three times in a day, right? Because breakfast, lunch and dinner, we have three major meals in the day. Accordingly, the sugar has three major spikes in the day. And we require to give three shots of insulin at least to take care of all these three big spikes in the day because even leaving one spike will be so detrimental in the long run. Therefore, all type 1 diabetics will require at least three shots of insulin per day and in some cases four shots per day. Another big question is whether or not the tablets work. No, vast majority which is to say 99% of the tablets do not work. Even the remaining 1% tablets are not the definitive treatment. They may be of some additional value, but tablets are never the main cause of treatment for type 1 diabetes. Again, people ask whether islet cell transplantation or pancreatic transplantations help us cure type 1 diabetes. Lot of research is going on. As of now, even that is not the preferred choice because somebody to, somebody to undergo a transplantation also requires to be on very potent cytotoxic drugs, drugs which suppress our immunity levels. Otherwise, our body will reject that pancreatic transplant. 
it takes it as a foreign body and tries to kill the foreign body therefore somebody who undergoes transplantation is also on potent immunosuppressive therapy as a result the person develops a whole variety of complications and this becomes even diffi- more difficult to handle than the disease itself therefore the pancreatic transplantations are not an option as of today now let us discuss about the diet pattern of type 1 diabetes the basic principles of diet are the same be it type 1 or type 2 diabetes i made a separate video on the basic diet in diabetes i also provided english subtitles for the video i am providing you with the link here please click on it and watch it now the additional thing in type 1 diabetes is that we have to follow what is called the three meal and the three snack pattern apart from the three regular meals breakfast lunch and dinner the person also needs to have a mid morning snack around 11 11:30 a mid evening snack around 5 or 6 pm and a bedtime snack half an hour before going to bed why because the person is already on three shots of insulin or four shots of insulin somebody who is on insulin is always at a higher risk of developing hypoglycemia low sugar therefore to prevent that from happening we have to give small frequent food or meals thereby the sugars will be evenly distributed and the risk of hypoglycemia is also significantly reduced now what about the testing protocol investigations required for type 1 diabetes every year the person has to undergo the typical routine diabetic complication screening profile i made a separate video on that i am again providing the link here please go through that once along with it once in every 3 months the person has to visit a doctor and have an opinion regarding the insulin doses and the sugar readings now let me tell you few very important precautions required to be observed by anybody with type 1 diabetes number 1 never miss your insulin shot especially during illness during fevers or infections keep checking sugars frequently and you may even increase your insulin dose by a few units as per your doctor's suggestion and therefore never miss an insulin shot whether you are ill or healthy number 2 be meticulous with your diet as systematic as you can or possible number 3 never miss your exercise except when you are ill one hour of exercise is very important for appropriate management of sugars number 4 always carry glucose tablets with you nowadays a commercial brand glucovita is easily available everywhere whenever you feel any of these low sugar symptoms just uh, chew three or four tablets of glucovita and the immediate danger is averted number 5 always carry a card with you which should mention your name your health condition and also a note that if at all you seem to display symptoms of low sugar hypoglycemia the people around you should be able to identify those so mention make a list of those symptoms and then leave an instruction telling them to administer little glucose into into your mouth if you are unconscious god forbid and lastly always observe for the red flag signs the danger signs during which you have to consult the doctor immediately they are excessive urine stomach pain excessive vomiting confused state of mind now the one big worry everybody has is how will be the life how is the future there is a good news for you your future is secure your life is going to be as normal as it can but only that you have to take your insulin shot that's all because typically all type 1 diabetics are so intelligent that is my personal observation and also many experts and seniors agree to this point people with type 1 diabetes are extremely intelligent they have a lot of common sense so god has given you or nature has given you a difficulty and also the ability to cope up with the difficulty so be as cheerful as you can be as systematic as you can and these days you can lead a happy life of about 70 years to say the least you can marry you can have your kids you can hand, even handle your grandkids i have seen people i have people who are around 60 70 years old as of now they are type 1 diabetic for the past 50 60 years they have children they have grandchildren also so never get disheartened keep motivating yourself always keep a track of your sugars stick to the basics and lead a healthy and happy life therefore friends i hope you learned all the basics of type 1 diabetes today please subscribe to my channel and keep sharing this content with everybody because knowledge is strength
let me come back to you with another useful video next week until then take care thank you very much